five, Charlie six. We are observing you crossing the 260 of Lima at 31 miles west. Level is 10,700, velocity. In October 1996, a state of the art passenger jet careens out of control for 30 horrific minutes, then crashes into the Pacific Ocean. At the time, no one understands how this could happen. The answer to the mystery may be found in the aircraft's black box flight recorder. The story investigators uncover is how a simple human error set off a chain of events that ended in tragedy. Two cents of American money brought down a $75 million aircraft and killed 70 people. This kind of a problem that they faced that night was um, probably one of 10 over the last 20 or 30 years. You never lose hope immediately. You, you know, it takes time for you to get to that point that you, you, you will accept the fact that there's no people that got out of their life. We're gonna turn over! Lima, Peru. Jorge Chavez International Airport. Aero Peru Flight 603 prepares for takeoff for Santiago, Chile. The plane is a four-year-old Boeing 757, a state-of-the-art passenger carrier known for its reliability and safety. Aero Peru 603 is flown by two of the National Airlines' best pilots, Captain Eric Schreiber, 58, and First Officer David Fernandez, 42. Sixty-one passengers and nine crew members are aboard. Most are Chileans on their way home. Others are Peruvian, British, Italian, Spanish, one New Zealander, and other Latin Americans. Among them are the brother-in-law and a close friend of Mexican businessman, Monas Albert. We, our companies, do business in uh, South America. We export and every so often we will go to see our clients and, and on this trip uh, Kenny and, and, and Abraham went to see some clients in Peru and, and Chile. I had a very good relationship with both of them. With my brother-in-law, of course, uh, we were like brothers. I love the guy. He married my only sister, so it was, we had a great relationship. Checklists are complete. First Officer Fernandez hails the tower. Lima Tower, Aero Peru 603, runway 15, ready for takeoff. Aero Peru 603, use noise abatement. Wind calm, ready for takeoff on runway 15. 1515, transponder. Flaps 15, takeoff briefing complete. The captain makes a joke about their precision. See how accurate we are, not even Swiss. Rolling. The Aero Peru 757 is among a new generation of computer-controlled aircraft in which pilots are trained to rely on a central data system designed to reduce errors, both mechanical and human. On takeoff, the 757 performs perfectly. 80 knots. Check. V1, rotate. V2. Gear up. 
right. Within moments, the pilots get a very unusual reading. Must have. The altimeters are stuck. The altimeter indicates the height of the aircraft off the ground. It reads zero, though they were obviously flying. The altimeters have stuck. Yeah, all of them. This is really new. Keep V2 plus 10. The 757 is equipped with three altimeters, one for pilot, one for co-pilot, one backup. All three are dead. Then they lose another crucial instrument, the airspeed indicator. The speed. Eh? The speed. What's going on? We're not climbing. No, I am climbing, but the speed. Hold it. Maintain speed. Aero Peru 603 leaves the lights of Lima out toward the Pacific Ocean. With no airspeed or altitude instruments, the pilots are now flying blind. The air traffic controller in Lima maintains contact with the plane, noting its altitude and course. He does not hear when the pilots get a new, minor warning that they must adjust the rudder which steers the aircraft left and right. 603, we are descending. Rudder ratio. That's strange. Uh, turn to the right. Alan McLeod is a veteran Air Canada pilot. They got a rudder ratio warning, which consists of an amber light that would come flashing on there with a little beeping horn and a message on this engine crew alerting system saying rudder ratio. That's just a system that uh, reduces the amount of rudder the airplane has that can be used as the airplane accelerates and goes faster and faster. Because it was sensing wrong or improper information, it sensed a fault, so it gave a warning to the crew. The erratic warnings are being generated by the plane's central computer, but the pilots cannot understand why. Then, the dead altimeters spring to life. Climb, 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 climb! I am! Climb, you're going down, David! I am up at the speed! Yeah, but it's stuck. A mock trim rudder ratio. Climb, 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 climb! Set heading 100. Well, now you're... It's okay on this heading. Set the climb thrust. Center autopilot in command. Suddenly, altitude readings return to normal, but each passing moment takes them further into the dark night. Captain Schreiber tries to engage the autopilot to give them time to think. There is no command. The autopilot requires identical data from two of the aircraft's three flight control computers. But Schreiber's instrument readings are so different from those of Fernandez, the autopilot disengages. Then another alert. Mach trim, Mach trim. Mach trim indicates that the plane is not flying in a level position, yet the 757 is flying normally. Let's go to basic instruments. Everything's going to hell. Mach speed trim is a system that trims the airplane. It changes the angle of the uh, horizontal stabilizer in the back end of the airplane, and uh, that has to be changed as the airplane accelerates to a higher speed was getting false indications, so they got a warning that uh, they had an overspeed, which of course they didn't. That warning would consist of, again, the